Hello, hello, hello everybody. Welcome along Tuesday afternoon. I think we've got lots of people joining us later. So there won't be very many of you here at the moment, but you know, there's nothing to draw either today. I'll be on Discord shortly, but can't at the moment. Thank you very much. Cheers, big nose. Stone cold, big nose. Right, let's see if I can go on Discord, but I still need to access the camera. Tuesday afternoon with Chris and Robert. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Where's Chris gone? Oh, I see. I think we're, we're thin on the ground today. Lots of people joining in afterwards. So they're doing it. So we'll say hello to them for later on when they are doing it. It's good that we can um, catch up. I, I forgot to say, if you've got a palette knife, it would be useful today. Or a butter knife would work, anything really. Or a cre an old credit card could even work. Yeah, good. No, I haven't, no, because we're going to put the rock on, yeah, we're going to use a bit of knife texture and stuff first. I know, I'm using my canvas paper today, um, just for an extra bit, yeah. Because it's already got nice texture on it, so when we when we put the rocks, so when we do the rocks, um, it because uh, I'm basically going to put the whole rock on, then put the limpets and stuff on, then put the seaweed on. Almost like it is in real life. It is. It is an interesting one. I mean it. it this is on both a guest beach, and I I just thought how nice it looked. We'll simplify it, I think. Um, I did look for another a simplified version of it, but none of them with seaweed and limpets are simplified, unfortunately. It is um, and barnacles. They are. Yeah. But we can do it, we can do it. So we've, so am I. <laughs> so we've got um, black and white, burnt sienna, cadmium red, cadmium yellow and ultramarine. So I've got no staff this afternoon, so I might, if I get a customer, I'm gonna have to run down and do them. Yeah, so black, white, burnt sienna, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and ultramarine. So 
so there's nothing to draw because we'll do it afterwards we'll put the rock texture on first so I'm, I am going to use a palette knife or a painting knife or as I said to Robert you could use a credit card that would work anything with a sort of flexible end that you can drag the colour over to get texture and that's sort of marbled because there's bits of browns and reds and bluey greys in there I'm just going to let the people who are in the cafe know because the cafe's not open but there's a few things going on that um, just to give me a yell if somebody comes in I'll be back in a sec Right, so there is only three of you today, normally there's loads. Um, I, so I'm going to, uh, they're all catching up later. I've had lots of messages to say I'll catch up later. So I'm going to make up some, uh, I, I'm going to use my knife I think to mix up a bit of ultramarine and burnt sienna but i'm just gonna mix it up lightly and add a small amount of white no i'm not going to add any white yet i think i need more ultramarine than i've got on here Uh, cobalt because I want this really textured we will need quite a bit of paint on this one so I'm sort of buttering toast at the moment with it but I want um, I definitely need more ultra minute what I want to do is um, I'm following the gradient of the rock, which is a slight downward angle. Ultramarine. I haven't added any white to this yet. I will add a bit of white later. 
Yeah, it's it's. I I want it quite blue because the rock is quite blue. But if I do a little bit here, then add a little bit more blue and white. Hopefully, you'll. Uh, if I add a bit of white to that. I'm adding quite a little bit of blue and white on top with the knife so I'm cutting the knife across so I get a wedge or a bead and then I'm dragging it lightly so the first layer is a heavier drag the top layer is a lighter drag just so it, it breaks to get a bit of texture in there I might add just blue and white as well so just play around with your colours really, as, as long as it's ultramarine and burnt sienna and white, vary the amount of blue, brown and white and sort of let it skip along. So basically when you work with a knife like this, because obviously not everybody that is joining these classes will have used a knife, um, you, you, the knife is a tool to move the paint, it shouldn't really touch the surface, it should... Uh, you shouldn't hear this sound unless unless you're putting it on initially so for the next bit is more of a blacky color so I am actually going to use black in this section so you can hear how dark and how much uh, pressure I'm putting on if we can get it covered then we've got a lot less hassle and we've got our texture ready and once I've got the black on you see I can work out how much I need to highlight the, uh, the top section so I'm making more of a noise with that So if you don't mix the colours thoroughly on your palette, that's actually a really good thing. I might throw in a little bit of cadmium red as well. Put some pinky bits. And then I can sort of... Oh, that's looking nice. So I'm just dragging the colour over very lightly. So it hits and misses and breaks. Maybe a pinky purple. So blue, red, white. Yeah. I mean we can do a bit of it while it's wet, so it shouldn't it shouldn't really be a problem. into that black a little bit to create that sort of shelf area so it's all just I want that darker color in there I mean you could technically there's a bit of an ochre in this as well but I just thought that was one too many colors but you could mix a little bit of um, cajello and burnt sienna together because this is going to take as you said Chris it's going to take a while to dry so you can play around with your colors and marble them a little bit because that's that's really what the knife does if you don't mix your colors through thoroughly it enables you to just add extra things so if you use your knife as a way of creating the contours or the angles so you can bring it down if you want a downward area and across if you want an across bit it's a way of using up your paint so you buy some more from me <laughs> I 
so I'd get it in quick. I know we've done lots of orders today and yesterday, but all over the country. Um, I was I drove out to Toast, just beyond Toasty yesterday, um, to do an order. Uh, but we're posting off to Liverpool and Manchester this week as well. So we've got customers from all over the place, which is lovely. It's nice to feel supported. I'm just trying to work out almost like levels and platforms so I can add a lighter colour to show it's the top and a slightly darker colour to show it's a side. So we don't have to worry about any of the limpets or barnacles or anything at the moment. So if it's going across, if my knife drags across then I want it to imitate a flat surface. And if I drag it down, I'm hopeful that the texture imitates a, um, a downward surface. But we've got lots of seaweed to hang over a lot of this anyway. So if in doubt, seaweed will cover, cover all of our problems. Some very red bits. It's amazing how many colours are in this rock, isn't there? tends to go more red, more sort of like an Indian red, cadmium red and burnt sienna as it gets further down. I know you like an Indian red, don't you, Chris? Light red. Yes. Well, this is probably an, a, a sort of Indian red, light red mix with the cad red and burnt sienna because burnt sienna is quite reddish. Try and get it a straight, a, um, strata, isn't it? In rocks, is it a strata where you get layers? Yeah, layer. So I'm just doing a slightly lighter version going across, and then a slightly darker version down to get the different mix. Where the seaweed is though I'm going to go um, almost with the black just where the the other textures are but hopefully you can see that we're sort of creating this sort of cave area and then sort of steps coming down. So we've, we've escaped all of the thunderstorms haven't we? I, I was um, I was watching I saw is it up near Sheffield, the size of the hailstones they had there? Did you see any of the footage of that? They were sort of dog biscuit size and um, like nine or ten normal hailstones glued together or fused together to create funny icicle shapes. Really fascinating. Are you painting along today, Anne, or are you just watching and listening and ah remind me what did we do on Monday morning oh yes did you see Louise posted her beach hut the other day this last night it looked lovely have you posted it Chris oh I'll have to have a look in a bit then well, that's good. I, I don't expect anything else. Do 
Yeah, because we're doing next week, I think, aren't we? A woman walking a dog on the beach or something, or the week after. Yes. No, well, oh, but it was. And because and, I noticed Louise had put some seagulls in hers, and that seemed to look nice as well. So, no, it's good. I like it. I approve. So I'm going darker on the left hand side of the right hand side just because I know that a lot of it's going to be covered up with seaweed. I'm not going to do it as as on mass as it is there. I want to make it look a little bit more seaweedish on its own rather than lots of other stuff. So yeah, Jackie's gone for the day. She's done her she's done her time with me. So uh just me now it is yeah I know um I know um tr yeah I know they're watching later I know Trish um can't make it today and Nick and a few others so um I don't mind so at least I don't feel it's funny because I know there's there's a few of you here anyway but I don't feel like I'm doing it alone because I know other people will watch it later. And what I'm, what we're finding, which is absolutely wonderful, is that people are joining. You know, once I post them on a Saturday or a Sunday to say this is what we've done this week, I get a lot of messages from people saying, "Oh, can I join in now? Can I join retrospectively?" So people are watching after the event. So they might not watch now; they might watch in a week or five weeks' time. So that's it's it's. It's nice that we can do that because we've never been able to do that with our classes before. Normally, when you miss it, you miss it. Um, so now it's sort of like uh, we've got our own catch up. It's difficult because obviously we we're, we're not Jackie and I aren't the most tech savvy people, and we're having to we're having to try and um, just go with the flow with it all really and and see how we we get on. Um, but we, we we get in there, I think. We get in there. No, no, yeah, we will be, yeah. It's just, just for this bit we're using the knife for the... That would be interesting. I think that might be a challenge too far, don't you reckon, Chris? It is. It's 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 because you're holding it different to a brush, aren't you? You hold it differently. Um, it works in a in a very different way to uh, to a brush. Um, so yeah, I, it is difficult, and and it, sometimes it's hard for me to sort of. Oh, I've just covered up the hole there. Um, it's hard for me to sort of uh, switch sometimes from medium to medium. And from implement to implement, you know, so one morning I might be doing watercolours with a brush and a fine brush, or I might be doing calligraphy with a pen, and the next minute I might be uh, using a, a knife, which it's fun, but you do have to think in a slightly different way. But I like a challenge. Well, yes, absolutely. Give it, give it some obscure title. Mother and child, or, or um, slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to hear about Jenny Eden recovering, so that's really lovely. Um, she's had a real tough time of it. Three months. Yeah. So it seems like she's still got quite a bit of recovering to do.
Wow. Yeah, because he was really bad, wasn't he, Michael Rosen? Something like something like that, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, so awful. Just awful to I can't comprehend it. I think I've got too much striation now, I need to sort that out. I was going to say, how's, how's, how? Lots of, lots of paint today. But in terms of all the other stuff, we're not going to be using masses of it. So I think, I think we'll be all right. It, it'll, yeah, hopefully. Shall I put the Shop Happy link up? <laughs> It's interesting. It, it it is all angled downwards. There's not there's not any sort of like crevices or cracks in this, is there? It's uh, it's it's all angled down. I don't think I'm going to do any more knife work. Let me wipe my knife off because it's absolutely filthy. Oh, so, um, I was I had a chat with B uh, Bambri FM this morning about. Uh, the shops reopening on the 4th of July so that's nice I know the cafe will be open for takeaways and there'll be a bit of outside seating I think so we've just got to wait and see how we can manage everything safely as a town and as individual businesses because it's uh, it's it's an un it's an unknown isn't it at the moment everything is sort of different um, what I might do is I might use a sort of thin brush with some black just to emphasize some of the lines so when I use a thin brush I use a runny black and don't worry about not being at the same point as me I, at least you'll be able to see what I'm going on about I can sort of sculpt the lines in a little bit more. Have any of you been to Bortha Guest Beach? It's a lovely beach, isn't it? Just round the corner from Port Maddock. Because Port Maddock Port Maddock hasn't got a beach, has it really? So if you do a ten minute walk along um past the harbour in Port Maddock, um you're in Bortha Guest and the beach is down a massive rocky path um, it's really quite nice and lots of hills and cliffs and undulating land it's nice in fact I, I was there this time exactly this time last year yeah I was uh, I had my decennial holiday um, three day break because um, one of my students has got a gorgeous cottage in Oh, what was it? Pen Penrindon Dryers or something like that. Um, yes, do dry. Yeah, that's it. Um, a nice little cottage there that they rent out. And they were just starting to... They were... Absolutely. And uh, she's got that. She was just starting to let it out. Um, so I was, I was, uh, I trialled it for them. Gorgeous, um, two bed cottage, self catering, obviously. Um, really nice. Yeah, it's just a thin sort of a riggery brush with runny black to 
to help give me the the textures of the the rocks. Or does he want to go out and play? Oh. Is he still lots of energy? Kathy's birthday today, so they've uh, they planned a bit of a surprise for her downstairs. So they had to take her out. One of them took her out, and then the other two have just been getting the cake and everything ready for a surprise. It's better actually that she's shut today because they could plan it a lot easier. I did much red in and I want I think I want to so I'm going to do it with a bit of a brush Because you can't really get this same sort of texture with a brush. I'm trying to do it so I'm sort of rolling and, and lifting off at the same time to get the texture. But it doesn't work in exactly the same way as a knife does. But uh, it'll do a little bit. And it doesn't matter so much if, um, as I say, if it's wet when we put the other things on. We've just got to work out. So with acrylics... The general idea is that thick paint won't stick to thin paint. So if you've got a diluted paint on your paper, thick paint won't stick to it. Whereas if you've got thick paint on your paper or your, or your surface, runny paint will cut through it and sit on the surface. So it's easier to be start off thicker and thin it out. It is. I think that obviously a lot of it's going to be textured and stuff, but it's uh, it's the tricky bit to start with. 
to map it all out but you can see why I didn't bother drawing <laughs> can you imagine if we'd have drawn all of this out and then I got the knife out I don't think I'm going to do any more to it. I've added a few darker cracks and things in. But, uh... <laughs> right, I'm just going to nip down. I've got a customer. I will be back. Shortly.
I am back. It looks quite like a cave at the moment. It'll look different, I suppose, when the seaweed and the shells are on it. and the, So it gives it a sense of scale. It looks better on the camera than I think it does in real life. But, you know, it's always the case, isn't it? Part of me wants to make it more um, with a few more crags in it, but it, it wasn't like that, but I am going to cheat a little. Because there's actually bits of water in it where the tide has been in, so you could do little thin lines and dots of white in some of the joints so it just gives it that extra bit of a sparkle Oh, thank you. It's uh, it's definitely better with the with the the darker lines, but the contours help because obviously my lines have been going across for the flat bits and down for the the down bits really um, to try and make it work. But it's a, almost a lesson in itself painting the rock, isn't it? I probably won't put as many limpets and barnacles on but uh, just a little bit we'll do the we'll do the main shell and a few other bits and then a bit of seaweed um, to show willing <laughs> those little white lines and dots work really well to create that texture, that little glimmer of, of moisture on there to make it feel wet. I've left the, the right hand side just dark without much texture or anything going on because I know the seaweed's going to go over that so I'm not going to worry about it too much.
I've actually got some bits drying already, that's quite surprised me. So that's, that's good. Right, so I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. Although it's 10 to 3 actually, it'd be a good time to, once you've got to that point, we'll have a quick uh, drink break and then we can plop the barnacles on and a bit of seaweed in the, in the remaining time. Yeah, it does look really nice actually. It's uh, on the screen. It's hard to work out which is my paper and which is my drawing board now. It's all a very similar colour, isn't it? Right, let's get that kettle on.
Ooh, right. Oh, actually, some of this is really dry. That's really good. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's not really... Because th this isn't massively thick, you see. I've got little bits that are dry and little bits that are wet. So, um, you want parts of it to be touched dry, I think. That's the best thing. But I've still got little areas there. Tacky. If you've got a cotton bud, you might find it useful for the next bit. Right, so. I'm going to uh, use a cotton bud for the barnacles to start with. I'll show you I'll show you what what and how. I'm just gonna mix and my white's quite dirty anyway. I'm just gonna mix a bit of white cadmium yellow. Bit of burnt sienna. That's probably too much burnt. Too much burnt sienna. It goes sort of a pinky colour. And I don't want to make a uniform mix again. I want it quite haphazard. But I'm hopeful that if I load up a uh, cotton bud and do it right. I mean, I say do it right. It's just a cotton bud. But by pressing down hard you get a hole in the middle just like a barnacle so if I do a wiggle and then press down look at that isn't that clever yeah you'll see it you'll see it in a minute on uh, on discord So this is uh, white with a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of cad yellow. Cad yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. You could use the end of a brush because the end of a brush is rounded and when you've got a rounded end it always gives you a hole in the middle. Or if you wanted bigger ones you could use your finger, a little finger, um, 
because they're not perfectly round are they so it works out wonderfully using a cotton bud and you could always fiddle and faff at a later date with um, you know a bit of textures and what have you but I'm only going to be doing the ones at the moment with this colour that are um, on the lighter tones we will make a slightly darker version of it um, for underneath and inside the cavey thing later but this is quite fun I should, I'm going to have to get a few cotton buds I think because this is uh, falling apart but it's a really simple method of doing a barnacle without actually having to do a barnacle and you can use your cotton bud on its edge and it will give you slightly different shaped ones let me chop the end off that one ready to do the next bit and I'm responsible these are um, cotton wool ones and they're paper handles so there's no plastic it's all recyclable I've not wet them first, I'm just dipping them in my mix. So I'm doing all of the lighter version ones first. Well, my white's so dirty actually I could just use the white paint I've got for now. It's white with a bit of yellow and a bit of brown in, but I'm going to add um, a dirty white, which is mine anyway, but I'm going to add a little bit more yellow brown and a little bit of black for the ones that are in the shade underneath the, the roof of the little hollow area. I 
they are what I'm going to do is um, probably um, put a few lines on it later on when it's all dry Might use a brush just to do a few more definite shapes on the ones that are sort of facing up where I need a thinner brush on it. Because it's all similar tones, even the, the limpity thing there is, is a similar tone. Little mini volcanoes, aren't they? You see, what I might do is, um, when this is all dry, so it might not be today during the lesson, but I might do a bit of a purple shadow on the lower left-hand side or something um, to make it feel like they were 3D. I think that would work quite nicely. some of that black to fill in some of the holes because some of them are holy five past three we're doing all right
I don't want it to look like frog spawn with too many dark holes in, so I'm going to quit while I'm ahead at this, I think. But it look, it's quite effective, isn't it? Certainly one that you can spend forever fiddling with, isn't it? If you wanted the sort of different striations on it and Because the limpet is basically exactly the same colour and everything as the uh, as the barnacle things, but um, I'm going to be using a brush instead to paint a triangle with a rounded bottom, a conic, a conical shape, I suppose. But then I'll do darker bits around it. I think. So it's it's always just the same sort. Of, they're a bit bluer, aren't they, limpets? They're a bluey grey in places. So you've got blue and cream and a few other bits in there. But I'll, I'll put the lights on, then I can do the darks as a sort of stripe. I'm reluctant to put the... the barnacles on this just yet I just see how it's almost like a bit of a frilly dress So yeah, it's uh, an interesting exercise today, but I should, I've still got my cotton bud, so I'll be able to do some interesting bits with it, but lots of yellows, browns, whites and blues today, and obviously we'll need, I'm just mixing up a really runny, creamy, greeny, grey colour for some highlights of the have our little lim limpity thing. That's alright. Oh, maybe your internet. Although there's been power cuts near you, haven't there?
I am there yet. I can hear you. Haha, <laughs> no. Been, been here an hour and a half. So I'm, I'm just sort of playing around with different shades of yellows and blues and greens for this sort of limpet. But I will put um, the barnacles on top of this. So I'm painting this the sort of rough idea of the, of the actual shell. Yes, a bit of pen around them or something, absolutely. Because I'll, I'll wait for it to totally dry and, and fiddle and get the sort of interesting crater shapes around the pen, with, with the pen. Because um, I, I clogged a pen up yesterday trying to do some pen work too eagerly. I think so, because you can get the, the really interesting um, linear bits on it, can't you? Like the craters and... They are like, yeah, they are just like little volcanoes, that's right, yeah. So a bit of pen work at the end to finish it off. It, I probably will not be doing the pen work today um, because of the... The time scale of it all. I'm trying to. I, I, I want to outline darker where this meets the floor, but equally, I don't want it to look like it's outlined, which is tricky. I'm doing a few with a thin black runny line. Be better off as grey to be honest. I think the black's a bit too harsh to go around some of these. But it is worth doing. Slowly build it up. The seaweed will do in two 
Pues no hay dos. So far, not displeased with this, but it could all change once the seaweed goes on. But this is looking a bit barnacle-ish, which is good. It's looking a little bit like it, it is in the picture, which is also good. It always worries me at this point, then, once everything's starting to look like it should. Because again, I don't want to put loads of detail on it, but I think it needs, you do need some detail in a scene like this, because we've kind of done a zoom in, haven't we, of, of, of an area. We're, we're almost painting it life size. And to get the seaweed to feel like it's hanging, that's good that we've got the dark um, the dark areas already on the rock. I might even put a bit of a black runny wash over some of my um, barnacles when they when it dries, just to push them back. A little bit. I can do a few that are wet, uh, that are still that are dry. And what happens is when you run over it with a washy black, it um, it fills in the craters that the brush created. As long as it's dry, obviously, if it's wet, it's gonna just um, smudge. because that grey wash just pushes them back a little bit but this is definitely one that you'll want to spend more time on um, but you can see now that those barnacles behind that main shell thing now I've put that black runny wash on they're there but they're in shadow like they are in, in real life and for the really far ones I'll put another black wash on when that's dry spend about half an hour or so with the seaweed then. Gosh that tea went cold really quickly. Is it chilly out there today? I've not really been outside since I got in at eight, half past eight this morning. It was a bit drizzly when I got in this morning. seaweed just a small thin flat brush so it's like a quarter of an inch or something
just lent on me picture. Up, upper left. Yeah, it is hard to spot, isn't it? There's just a couple of barnacles that give you a rough idea. Yeah, t yeah, that's it. Exactly. The top left-hand corner is the is the only indication of where the the dark bits are. Oh, I better get that phone as well. I'll be back in a sec, then we'll work on seaweed. Hello. What with black paper in? Oh, possibly. Right, I'm just in the middle of a class, but I'll run downstairs and I'll look for you. I'm back. Right, so I'm going to mix my seaweed darker colour first, which is basically cad yellow and ultramarine. Oh, I'm running out of space on my tile. Let me move these cotton buds out of the way. OK. 
cadmium, yellow and ultramarine. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna in there. Oh, that's an interesting colour. And I'm just going to use my flat brush and paint paint sort of the the, the leafy bits and then this will be the darker tone that I will then add highlights on top of it's a weird thing isn't it seaweed I've never really looked at it so closely with the the bally bits and the bladderack can you eat them The seaweed's supposed to be good for you, isn't it? So I always, you know me, I like to put the dark bits in first. And then we can put the highlights on top. I think we need more blue and yellow mixed together for this. But I did say we weren't going to do loads. And I don't need it, I don't want it too runny. And you can always add glazes of burnt sienna over the top if you want to sort of darken anything. a lot of seaweed I'm not going to do that much I've got an acrylic class at 7 o'clock tonight. We're doing Stonehenge at night with like a beautiful um, evening glow. But it's the, 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 I think the photograph's been extremely heightened so you can see sort of like the Cosmos, the, the Milky Way and stuff behind it. Really a beautiful scene. We did it in pencil last Tuesday night and we're doing it in acrylics tonight. So that'll be... Yes. Oh, like yeah. Well, that would um, that would work really well with pastel. But tonight it'd be quite nice because we can do a bit of spattering to get the the fine white stars and some nice. Because it's not boiling hot, I'm hopeful that the it won't dry within seconds. So we've got a bit of time to blend. Which, as you know, is always a bit tricky with acrylics. I think um, some of our newer students are finding that the hardest thing. Because um, it looks so nice, and because you can cover everything over, it's not as scary. But, if you've only ever worked in watercolour, I think moving into acrylics is very scary and different, isn't it? What did you start off in, Robert? Did you do watercolour first or acrylic first? Are you there? Oh. You disappeared, okay. You might have lost the connection or something, maybe. Yes. 
Are you doing your your French lessons, Chris? Are you doing them online then now, or you you know your meetups? Oh, nice. I'll just have this seaweed on the right hand side I think and then I'll let that darker tone dry and then mix a lighter one with ultramarine a lot of cadmium yellow a touch of burnt sienna and a bit of white I think for the highlights but I'll, I'll let that dry for a minute half past three already where does the day go all I seem to be doing for the lately is just looking at the time and being alarmed by it and going it's half past 12 or it's half past 10 that's all i really all i do all day every day that's it, it is true and there's so much to do here so much to do so i heard the national galleries being closed for quite a long time while it has a multi-million refurb Absolutely. I mean, if it, if you go into, if it, it makes the most of uh, having a lot less people coming in. Oh, he's on. He's, uh, Robert's just commented on uh, on the Facebook page. He started in oils and then moved into acrylics along the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Robert, I'm I'm assuming then acrylics are a bit more of a different step, a, a similar step with your oils, then, aren't they? Whereas um, watercolors is very different, isn't it? Very different. So I want that to dry a little bit more because I want to keep the dark green as a as an under as an undercover. As a base, that's it, the word base, a base colour. I can get my words to work. Let me mix up the lighter tone. So it's very, it's a very yellowy green, isn't it? So I'm just going to mix more of. Oh, I'll also, get it all up my finger. Bit of burnt sienna. A bit of white. Oh, can I make do? No, I'm going to have to squeeze a bit of white out. Highlights mixing. Bit of brown, bit of green, a bit of white, bit of yellow in there. And let's 
sort of uh, for the, the what are the bulbousy bits on seaweed called? The bobbly bits. They're called what? Ladders. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I'm sort of using this lighter green and then tapping it with my finger a little bit so it uh, blends in a little I really don't want to do masses of stuff, you see. I want to keep, keep some of those darks. Because otherwise they'll end up looking a bit like Venus flytraps or, or something from Little Shop of Horrors if you're not careful. <coughs> Feed me see more. So that smudging with the finger is really quite essential to help get that subtle blend of tone. So I'm doing all the, the bladdery bits first. But there is every chance I might do a few brown glazes on some of this. You could almost do a two-tone brush thing with this.
but again you could always add some extra darks or some shadow colour You also don't want it to look like grapes, so it is a it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Do a few brown glazes on some of this to break up some of the green, but making the brown really, really runny. But I think I do want to add some darker shadow. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Because I think this is one that won't actually benefit from being overly fluffy, you know. Oh really? I can imagine. What a way to spend your time, that's amazing. It's almost like watching paint dry, isn't it, I would imagine. Just as thrilling. I might add some dark bits in with some black in between just to make it pop a bit more because I've, I've got a lot more space in between them but uh, it's 10 to so I don't want to spend more time faffing than I need to because I don't know if it will make it any better but I'll try let me do a bit of black let's go with my thin brush and a bit of black some runny black just to sort of See if it makes any difference. Brings any shapes out.
little bit of black does help bring some shapes forward and Yeah, a little bit of a black outline does make a, a difference. Just brings brings some of the, the colours out a little bit more. I don't honestly think I can do any more to this, but it's quite an interesting subject, isn't it? It's very different to a normal lesson. Because it's almost almost monochromatic in a way, isn't it? In in the sense that we've got lots of different tones of, of similar colours that... Uh, We're on the new sheet for the next class, aren't we? Which is the what's the next one? Oh, two swans on the 14th of July, so it'll be close up of two swans swimming. 
We've done some swans in the background before, but we've never really concentrated on the the swans. A long, long time ago, we did a big, dramatic, sunlit swan on almost black water. Um, but this is it's not. It's going to be a sort of mixture between the two, I think. But it's uh, lots of interesting subjects. Mm. Over the next six months, which is good. There's absolutely nothing more I can add to this. Thank you. It looks better as a photograph uh, as on a screen than it does in front of my face. But I think I've just fiddled a little bit with a couple of the barnacles. I'm actually quite pleased with this. Um, but it's it was useful having that whole knife to, to block in the tech. I think we wouldn't be able to get the same sort of tone um, textured with, without the, the knife in there. But putting that glaze of black over the barnacles that were inside the cave makes them feel like they're inside the cave. So, um, yeah, that's quite... Uh, an interesting subject today yeah because you think oh it's just a bit of rock with some barnacles and seaweed on but actually that the techniques used are, are a lot more um, interesting than it seems you could even put a few runny highlights on some of the seaweed if you wanted to make it feel like it was sort of almost glistening mm. I think the photo, but that's what's good, isn't it, about painting, is that you can miss bits off and, and tweak it a little bit to suit what... Yeah, I've I've added a bit more reds and purples in there than on the on the photo, because it was... Um, I mean, I can sort of see the colours there, but it's it's a bit... It's a bit boring, and it if, if not, it could run the risk of going a bit dull. And I think, because we've got lots of dull colours, just having that little pop of pinks and purples knocking about, it uh, it brings it brings it up a little bit. So that's me done for the day. Well, it's not done for the day at all. I close at four, and then um, I'll be faffing about, and then I've got a class at seven. So uh, another another busy day, which is nice. Keeps me off my keeps me off the streets. So. Uh, Yes, do. I look forward to seeing what you've created. And for those that are joining in later, I look forward to seeing what you do later. So that'd be good. 
excellent right if I, i'll sign off discord and then sign off um the uh, thing so thank you very much so i'll see you for the drawing class tomorrow lovely excellent thank you very much take care see you all soon bye bye